Okay, we are officially motion to, to sit uh, James Yao for Michael Chen. Bob, second? No. Yep, call him again. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Okay. Okay, if he joins, he can comment, of course, be part of the meeting, but um, James, pay extra special attention now. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first order of business. Let's approve the minutes, please, for the May 7th meeting. Um, any edits, changes, suggestions, or can I have a motion to approve? Uh, motion so moved. Okay. Uh, Nick, second. Tom, all in favor? Opposed, none. Okay. Okay. So, uh, a few items tonight. First is to go through where we are. We've approved a budget, we voted on it. Now we have to do some uh, final tweaks here to get the mill rate. One of the reasons we wait till June is we get news as the year gets closer to being over. May has closed. And so we have, I think, the latest amount of information on where we are. We will also get an update on the police department building, as well as the very exciting update, I think, on the Playhouse. Tiger smiling. I know it's a good update. So, okay. First things first. Um, I'd like to just read you all the background as to where we are and, and just some context for the decision we need to make on, on what we want to do from a drawdown point of view. So just to get some facts for everyone and get you up to speed. Um, right now, we're projected to finish the year with a $3.9 million surplus. Does everybody have this page in front of them? This is the one pager that Josh, yes, yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna cover some of the details on this page, but thought I'd uh, give you this page as a summary to work from, and then you can follow it and we can have a lively discussion on what we wanna do. Um, so right now we're projecting a $3.9 million surplus. I would say that's a good number, and Josh, could be a click low, but probably a good number. Pretty good? Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty off. Expenses um, will be about a million, 1.8 million less than budgeted, and our revenue will be about 2.1 million more than budgeted, which is good. It's a little below our earlier expectations, driven by, I would say, slightly less revenue in some areas, our goal, obviously, every year is to do what we can to give the surpluses back to the taxpayer. So that's what we're going to work on here. During the process in January through our approval vote in April, the Board of Finance, the Board of Selectmen, Town Council, just to recap everything here, we collectively reduced the operating expenses plus adding a little bit of revenue to the tune of $5.3 million to the good. And we also uh, cut 9.7 million of capital out of the budget as well. So thank you to all the parties on that. Those are meaningful changes, <clears throat> as you'll see. Uh, but in spite of those, uh, and in spite of the cuts, uh, we still funded really ev almost everything everybody asked for at the end of the day with all the town support for the school budget, the fire, police, parks and rec, public works, and all the other priorities um, that everybody put forth. So I think we did a good job being prudent and a good job. Everybody did, a, I think, a great job supporting the needs of, of the town. Um, over the past five years, our average increase in the amount raised by taxation has been 1.43. So that's the ad annual average over the past five years. And that's, in my opinion, and I think all of us would agree, a very excellent achievement, well below inflation and well below contracted labor increases. So that's really helped us avoid you know, millions of dollars of tax increases or taxes. Turning to this year, let's start with the grand list. The grand list increased 23.5% coming out of the most recent revaluation. That's actually a little lower than what was originally forecasted. I think it was more like 25 plus uh, back in October, November, when I wrote that first letter in December, I think we were thinking 25. Anyway, it went up 23.5. Uh, from a budgeted expense perspective, as always, the biggest increase in the budget this year will be around the Board of Ed. Um, operating expenses will increase 3.2 million or 3.67% year over year. I will say that's in the range that we asked for, um, but it's still 3.2 million and 3.67. Percent uh, Board of Ed healthcare expenditures will be up 2.8 million or 19.4 percent. That's a big jump. Um, town expenditures for all the town departments are projected to increase 3.95 percent or 2.1 million. So those are sort of the big drivers to the increases. In summary, total expenditures are up about five percent. Uh, the proposal in front of you here takes the 3.9 million surplus plus another 1.1 million. Uh, from the general fund for a total of a $5 million drawdown to give back to the taxpayers and lower the mill rate. So that's the, the 
base case that we've put together to discuss. We just figured we should start with something that was reasonable and fair, maybe slightly aggressive, but still a good base case. Um, with that 5 million, the amount to be raised by taxation is $158 million, up 5.27% year over year. The mill rate would be 16.14. You can see that on the sheet. That would be a decrease of 14.76% from last year. Obviously, that's driven by the increase in the, in the grand list. Um, what would this mean for property taxes? So I did a little analysis. The town of New Canaan has 7,230 properties. Under this scenario, 1,870 properties, or 25% of the total, would see a decrease in their property taxes next year, given this base case. <clears throat> 1,870 properties would have a decrease. 2,900 properties will see a tax increase between zero, um, literally $1, $2, things like that, and $2,000. So 2,900 properties will be between a zero and $2,000 tax increase. Um, of the 2,900, just to go a click deeper on those 2,900, 875 of them would see an increase between zero and $750. And the remaining 2,025 would see an increase between $751 and $2,000. And then the last tranche is the, are the properties that will have an increase, tax increase of more than $2,000 under this base case. Those 2,460 properties would see that increase of $2,000 or more. Um, needs to be said that the average increase in the value of those properties that will increase, have a tax increase of $2,000 or more was 74.5%. So those 2,460 properties saw a very significant valuation increase in the reval. Um, 1,800 of those properties or about 25% of the total saw their property values increase 35% or more. So like I said, the average was 74%, about 25% of the total um, amount uh, in the town would be 35% or more. So in summary, 66 of the percent of the properties will see either a decrease or an increase between zero and 2,000. 34% will see a tax increase greater than 2,000. Um, we also, don't forget there's an impact on vehicles here. So we have about a $1.3 million tax cut on vehicles. The lower mill rate obviously has a positive impact on the vehicle tax. And unlike houses, there was depreciation this year, not an increase. So between the depreciation and the lower mill rate, the amount collected for vehicle taxes declined uh, 1.3 million. Um, so with the $5 million drawdown, we retain a fund balance of just under 11% of our budget expenses. That's important. Our guidance is to be at 10% or higher. Uh, Moody's guidance is to be at 10% or more. And so this is at 11, uh, not quite, 10.74, I think it was, yeah. Um, so just under 11. Lastly, using this base case, the average, in, 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 the average annual increase in the amount raised by taxation over seven years, including next year's budget, um, is 2.1%. So a pretty darn good average overall uh, for over a seven year window. Um, obviously we know this year's a higher, a higher amount. Um, and that increases, compares very well with all of our surrounding towns. So with that as a background, I just wanna give you some of those facts and figures. Those are all some of the things that will be impacted here with our decision. And like I said, the sheet in front of you has $5 million. Anne is on the line. Um, Josh is here with the spreadsheet. You see two things here. You should have two important things. One is the, the what I kind of just walked through from an analysis point of view. And the other is a little more of the financial analysis with a, with a table on the below here that has the mill rate impacts and the drawdown impacts. And so um, uh, you can see that is also very helpful. So with that, thoughts, questions, suggestions. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. I have a motion to approve. <laughs> 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 or just, you know, any questions you might have and, you know, if there's things you'd like to um, understand better or, you know, or we can, off yeah. the base case. So, so we're drawing $5 million from the fund um, to get us to 10.74 unassigned balance. I know that Moody's requires 10% or more, right, to maintain the rating. Um, what if we go down to lower, just to use more of the fund to lower the mill rate even further? Is that possible? If we go to $5.5 .5 million, um, that would lower the increase from 5 Point two seven to four point nine four. That's a half a million dollars. And um, Josh, you have to run the math. What does that do on the fund balance if we did five five instead of five? You, um, it would change it from ten point seven uh, ten point seven four percent to. 
10.45. So yes, is the answer to the question. That's why we do this live. Um, if we wanted to add another half a million, you're still over 10. Um, it does take the increase below five now into the fours. It probably just gave another 75 houses went from a dollar or five dollar increase to zero or less. So, right, that group, there's a group in the middle that's seriously at zero, one dollar, five dollars, nine dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollar increases. So, a little thing like that would they'd all be I mean, negative. Is that detrimental to our rating at all, Josh? <clears throat> that I think Ann would probably be better suited to Hands answer. Hands on. Yeah, hey, I'm on. Well, as I'm always concerned about the next year. So the more we pull down, the more the unassigned is lowered, and then you start off with a less unassigned next year. Um, and then you, you run the risk of the 10% policy. Yeah. So you, well, that makes sense, right? I mean, if we right. keep a little bit more in there, it allows us to level this out a little bit over time. If you know, We used 6 million last year, which is a big number, but we, we kind of got away with it with a good surplus. Um, and you know, you don't know how conservative our, our budgeting is. Um, we're in a good track record of running a surplus and manage the things that we do the way we do. But um, the agencies are pretty subjective. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a very blanket statement, but you just, you don't really know, but it seemed as though the meeting that we had, I, I sat in on it virtually, it seemed as though we were, you know, in good shape, but you just don't know how, you know, how hair trigger they are if you did drop below 10%. With, I mean, I can't imagine they're following it that closely that they'd come out and quickly downgrade us, but we'd have to take a bigger bite next year. We, we will earn one, one related question. Yeah. You know, I think question to ask will be how much money will we earn on our money? Cause we have a budgeted amount. Now the good news is I think we probably miscalculated that rates would be dropping already and they're not so we're probably going to do better from an income point of view on on the uh, in, on our on our on our cash than we budgeted for at least for the rest of this calendar year probably yeah mm -hmm. so that helps take a little of that pressure off to answer the question but it would seem that um we have so many other factors that go in our favor that being at 10 4 10 7 isn't really putting ourselves at risk with the agencies right. etc because there's so much other ab about our story that's in order and i'm not sure that that's really dangerous ne nevertheless i think while i agree with everything you said todd in terms of putting this in context we do need to be cognizant of the fact that in the most recent past the trends are not favorable right i mean inflation's a thing Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why with all of our hard work and all of our discipline, we're still faced with, you know, 5%, et cetera, and so forth. So to my mind, you know, having a little bit more of that dry powder, as Ann says, thinking about, you know, what we know, what we can anticipate, and perhaps you know, more cautiously, what we don't know about next year seems to me that that would tend, the way I look at this is, if I were to have a conversation about what's the right rate or amount that we uh, take to reduce the amount to be raised by taxation, I would have thought it would be at the 5 million mark or lower, uh, but I wouldn't go comfortably. I wouldn't go above five. That's just me personally. I would just like to, and I wish I had it in front of me, but on our bond rating that Moody's did specifically note uh, a concern about our um, unassigned fund balance and so and it was as Bob said it was a specific area of comment um, they don't really look at Connecticut you know we do things a little differently here and so um, while I would like to be able to give the taxpayer a lower year-over-year -year tax increase um, we are going out to bond again next year for the police department mm -hmm. um, I am gonna have to sit with this individual who was specifically made a specific comment and I don't wanna to have to have a tough conversation with him about this again. But um, so that would be my only comment. Well, the, and, then, and so related to that, another way to look at it is you could say the half a million is sort of meaningless in the whole scheme of things until we need it. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we need it, then we're not at 10. Yeah. You know, what if we need a million dollars for something? You know, what if we need, we have it because we have 20 or plus, but it will now knock us down below the 10%. That's yeah. the one way to look at it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, we, do you want to, any thoughts? 
no, I, I agree. You know, um, the, the incremental difference. It would not be a big difference, but it would be a big difference in the fund balance balance. Okay. If we had to do something, yeah. Yeah. Michael, thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. I think, uh, you know, back during the COVID days, I was always very, like with Tom, like, yeah, yeah. you have to save a rain day, remember, like, you don't even worry about it. I'm less worried about today, but, you know, I think 500,000 due to Ann's point and to, to all your point, Fiona's point is, it's a big deal when we need the 500,000, but it's not a big percentage for the shareholders. I, I think we, we keep it at five or lower. It's, it's good we have the conversation. If people wonder, why are you sitting on that money? Yeah. You give me more of a tax cut. Now they know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great question. That's why we. That's why I like yeah. to lay it out that way and give everyone mm -hmm. a little bit of the data. We can we can go back and forth, but also helps when you have to explain it to your neighbor. Um, well, triple. It's the cost of triple A's. Where it is because we would be double A one. And one. Yeah. Probably wouldn't cost you a whole lot more, than, but but it might. So on, on big dollars, it would be. Yeah. We're, we're triple A town. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Other comments or suggestions? Can you get it? You good with the five million? Call any anything on your? You okay? Okay. Well, I mean, I'm happy to take a motion if we're uh, we go with that. I'll give a motion. Okay. You you didn't, you got <laughs> bounced. You were, we had bounce. Yeah, because you weren't here when we started. We waited. You're allowed to we said, yeah, we said so. Did so. you need your mic? that motion. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, okay. I thought we were starting seven o'clock. You know, we yeah, we, yeah, well, we continued. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Can you make a motion if he's not seated? I don't think you can. I don't know. Oh, that's okay. I'm pretty sure no. you can. As I'm, much guessing as no. I'm guessing no. That would be uh, All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You're just yeah. Yeah. putting yeah. it out there. Yeah. 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 So, so no, we have a motion. A motion to approve, and I think I'd like the way that we need to you. frame it, though, is let me just get the script. Yeah. We have to a motion to approve a mill rate of 16.144 is the is what we're doing here with a drawdown of the five million, Josh. Is that I think that's that what sounds we right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, so, motion to approve that. James. Yeah, James. James. Second. Okay. Uh, I think Nick, thank you, had your hand up first. <laughs> Nick, Nick, well done. Okay, all in favor? All right, post none. Well done. Okay, thank you all. Okay. A lot of hard work. Um, Todd, can I just jump in one second and say, I have to say it and acknowledge Josh's work and his the press release oh. that went out that the 24 budget um, got the GFOA award for budgeting. Um, so I really wanted to give uh, um, credit to Josh and his work towards that 24 budget and getting the well, award. Well, how about a round of applause to oh. you both? Because you've done both of an amazing job. And Josh, every day. This is all Josh's work, by the way. Everything we have, all the analysis. It's, it's, it's a very much a team effort. I know, but it's a, you are amazing. You do a great, great job. Thanks for that, Ann. Um, Thank you. No, I need to acknowledge it. Okay, with that, um, I think that's it on the budget. Yeah. Oh, you need us to sign everything. Do so you want to do that or transfers first? Oh, transfers. <laughs> I do need them. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, let's. That over. No, well. we got to do the transfers, but then unfortunately, we need to sign the document on the budget before yeah. we go on to the police That'd station. Okay, since yeah. we're running ahead, so we're good. So I'll just share my screen real quick. Yeah. I don't have the transfers in front of me. Did you print them out? To be approved or are these for information? No, we they need a, we need are, a vote. Yeah, they're both. So no one can read that, unfortunately. Probably not. Um, I will make the ones you have to approve slightly bigger, though. OK. Um, so these are just to review several uh, administrative transfers of uh, $55,113, just a lot of departments kind of rearranging their money as needed right now. And then the ones that I will need votes on, and I'll make them a little bit bigger, just the one by one. Um, so we did something similar to this last year with the, with the POCD and land use. Um, in order for their 
POCD money within their department to not run out at the end of the fiscal year. We're transferring the remainder of it, of their uh, sort of outside contractors for the POCD into a special projects fund. So it's basically into a transfer out account of ours and then a transfer in on the special projects account uh, in their fund. So we have it worded as up to $35,000 since they have about 35,000 left. Um, so at the end of the year, we'll see what's actually remaining and then transfer that into a special project account. Um, the one below that, is basically rearranging the debt service between bond principal on the town and school and bond interest on the town and school because of the recent bonding. Some of those number, some some of those numbers needed to be rearranged, with the difference uh, of six hundred and five thousand of savings being moved into contingency. So that bottom number, I know it's incredibly small there, is being marked as savings and being brought into the contingency account. Um, below that is within the town buildings uh, department, there were several kind of, you know, emergency kind of repairs that needed to take place uh, from the town hall boiler, Vine Cottage AC compressor, and, uh, <clears throat> firehouse AC alarm room, et cetera. Um, so we're moving money from that we have savings from fuel and oil and electricity to outside contractors. Um, in the same but reverse vein, uh, for police all the way at the bottom, there's about 23,000 that they need in electricity over at where they're staying now in 29 Locus. Um, so we're transferring from contingency to the police uh, electricity line. And there was one um, heart and hypertension payout um, in the insurance liability department that we're taking from contingency. And so that's 120,000. $120, so I'd ask for a vote on, I guess, all of them as. I just have a question. Sure. So $605,000 contingency on this, that's a, obviously a big number. Is that town contingency, Board of Ed contingency? It's just, right, it's on the general fund side on the town's contingency. And now that we've voted the mill rate, did we factor that? That is that six hundred is marked under the savings and okay. expenditures. Yeah. Okay, so that was we knew our, that was for that sure. was part yeah. of our yep. the one point yeah. eight that's Got part it. of that. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And you're taking I'm appreciate not, it if you don't vote against it now. So you're taking a total of eight hundred plus thousand of principal and you're moving it into either interest or contingency. So um it's yep it's about eight hundred thousand being moved into uh, well it's it, it's actually uh about a million being moved to no but i'm looking at the, the fact that two of the categories are called but uh bond principal town bond principal school. right so the top three the bolded are, are from 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 and then two two is where they they're going yeah to. so my question is if you take the top two numbers it adds to about eight Eight hundred and ten thousand, yep. yep. and then you're pushing that into either interest and an account called bond interest, yep. or a contingency, which cool. it just doesn't make sense that you're used taking money that's in a principal it's, account, moving it into an interest account. It's a premium. It's bond premium, right? Yeah. So, well, so we didn't bond in fiscal year twenty four. So estimates were put into what we thought we were going to bond principal interest for town and board of ed. Mm -hmm. So. When it actually came, the actual numbers came through, um, these are the differences between what was budgeted and what um, was the actual. So we had three lines that were over budget, and we had one line that was under, which was the bond interest for schools. So we're just realigning between them and then putting the net into contingency. That we didn't spend in contingency. Right. Okay, makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, and the split between the town and the school, that's why... The school was under because the split wasn't correct on the budget, but it was over budget in total. So net net, you are increasing contingency by four hundred sixty-two thousand. Net net six hundred five. Why six hundred five and that and that? Well, well yes, net right? between all of these. Yes, all of these yes, four hundred sixty yes, increase in yeah. contingency. Yep. Okay. Saving. Any questions on the other items? Because if not, we can we can have a we can have one. Uh, one vote on all these line item transfers. If if you if if you want if you're okay with them, if you're not, we can take them one at a time. Okay. 
and seeing any I'll move. any debate. Okay. Oh, uh, so move to vote and approve the line item transfers as is. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Tom, all in favor? Opposed? None? Okay, Josh. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. You want to just we take one minute? It would be great. Just let's get it done. Bring bring the document over. We've got to sign because Josh needs to. We have, to, we have to sign the. Mm -hmm. uh, just pick it on Michael. Wow. Every chance you get. The poor guy comes. Right, look at him. Right he right 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 put right right on a tie for us in the boardroom. No tomatoes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Here for the big stuff. I'm like, whoa, I thought it was 15 minutes early. Tucker did us all of I tried to text oh. you and call you. Yeah, it's um, just got it so now. I was on my way here. Yeah, the, uh, the meeting can follow. In, we didn't right have to wait. Big, so. wow. <laughs> well, I, I print, printed the name Sorry. below, so I, didn't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know right. what the meeting goes up the top. Oh, oh, I thought that, I, you know what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was two different right. things. This one. I, I forgot my glasses. Oh. <laughs> Me too. I'm oh, sneaking that in. I see. Right. I see. Okay, we have I the see. other two back here. Tiger, I see Joe's on. So do you want to stick with us? We'll stick with the agenda, go to the police first, and then you? Yeah. 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 You, you're on for both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't take that. Okay. Hey, Joe, how are you? Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Great. Thank you. Excellent. We're multitasking, which is. Or have them come up here. Amy and Steve. You have to sign up here too. <laughs> yeah, I know. The joys. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I thought we were doing it 9 a.m. I'll be at graduation, so I don't know what you're doing at 9 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe they're doing something. Oh, well, you can save a trip by doing it now. Unless you want to do something special that I didn't know was going on. I was hoping. <laughs> Amy had a speech plan. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, you guys... I was just following the text. Oh, <clears throat> I missed that. I was not part of that text stream. <laughs> I'm left out of it. <laughs> All right, can we keep going? Sure. Okay, over to you, uh, Joe and Tiger. All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks uh, for coming in. I know this is an important project for us all too so absolutely so uh um unfortunately bill couldn't bill walber couldn't make it he's uh traveling uh, but uh joe zagorinsky our our project manager on the town side our senior engineer will uh kind of walk you through where we are as of uh this date with the police department and then we'll take any questions that you might have joe you're excellent you're all, yeah. you hear me okay yep yeah excellent <clears throat> so thank you for having us um as Steiger mentioned bill bill couldn't make it today um, but he gave me a couple of things for me to point out. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone on the building committee. Um, I'm always amazed at the the amount of hard work and dedication that they put in. Um, it's uh, the first meeting that we've had on this <coughs> building committee was December of 2020. So they've been working for a long time on this. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to let, let you know, there's a couple of things that were important to, to Bill for to let you guys know. And one of the items is that um, it's very important to the building committee that we're good neighbors. We have had community meetings. We've had a good outreach. We've had very positive feedback from EMS and all of our neighbors. We had a couple, um, a couple like you know trucks coming in, delivery trucks that that got in the way. But Turner was very proactive and and uh, got them out of the way without any sort of effort. Um, so, just to kind of recap. Uh, this is the existing 1926 school building. That was the idea was to preserve the building. That, that's what we're doing. This is the back section. It's about 8,800 square foot, uh, purposely built a, a central building for the police station. It houses all the essential functions that are very specific to a police station. Um, the, the, uh, and this in the back is the Sally port. So now we, Prisoners come into the Sally Port. They go into a processing center. There's there's uh, jail cells here. There's a couple of detention cells. So everything's kind of before it was a school that was forced into being a police station. 
and now it's a and now it's a, a preserved um, front for the administration portion of the building, and then a very purpose purpose built addition. So it's working out quite well. Um, as far as the the timeline goes, um, we started the design in August of 2022. And we're currently trending ab about, um, we were originally going to finish Thanksgiving of, of 25, and we're currently trending for, towards spring of 2025. So we're ahead of schedule. So that's a, that'll be a quick slide. Some quick progress. Um, we've come a long way. We've moved the prime radio site. It was moved out of the PD. The police department moved in December uh, over to 39 Locust. Turner started the demolition also in December of 23. February of 24, the rear of the building was demolished. And March, through March, we were putting in the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, um, and uh, all the above ceiling rough in for all, all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. Uh, April, windows and sheetrock installation um, among up uh, primarily in the existing building on the second and third floor. Um, the windows are now complete. Uh, the foundations are being completed now. And we've actually even started painting on the third floor of the existing building. And the next critical milestone that we have coming up is the steel. We'll be seeing steel. Um, we'll start a little slow in the next couple couple weeks because there's some critical items that they need to install um, that go in conjunction with some of the CMU walls that are being constructed. So it's just an order of operations thing, um, but we plan on having the steel uh, completed at the end of July and have a topping off ceremony. So this is um, this is our, our project superintendent, Scott from Turner. Um, this was this was one of our challenges is that we, the, one of the first challenges we ran into was the, um, the column line um, along the existing building needed to be resupported. Uh, it needed to be resupported because the the uh, footings were installed in 1926 um, much higher than they, they were expected. So when we started the demolition in the back, we realized that we had footings that were basically coming up through our floor. So we had to resupport the entire back of the building um, in order to um, be able to and you can see the actual picture. This is all the temporary shoring that was installed. Um, so we could remove the footings that were underneath. It was quite quite the effort. We had a jackhammer, separated the building um, from, the, from the footing, jacked it up, uh, welded it in place, and were able to take that footing out of place. So, um, and then you can see the pier. Then we had to build the pier. And this became a double footing there's another column that goes right adjacent to it to over here to the left, where you can see um, this will be part of the addition uh, column framing. Another one of the big concerns on this project was um, the police department had water issues. There was always a wet basement. Um, so it was a big concern when we were gonna save the building. Um, to in order to make sure that we waterproofed it properly. Well, the good news is we found kind of a, you know, the smoking gun. Um, there was existing waterproofing that had failed. Um, there was openings that we could see. Um, so we went in and we put in new waterproofing, drainage board, uh, insulation. Um, and then there's an, also a new footing drain at the, at the base of it. Um, so um, let's see here. And lastly, we're gonna, the building gets regraded. So before it was, everything was pitched towards the building, which was not a, not exactly a good uh, design, um, uh, not a very good design. And uh, now we're gonna, everything's gonna be pitched away from the foundation. Um, and also in the, in, they had sewer fly issues. They had some issues with cracked um, plumbing lines in the, in the basement and all that is going to is being replaced. So there's not going to be anything that's that's old and uh, leaky in the new building. Um, you can see here, this is where we are with the back addition. This over here is the um, Sally port. This is where the cruisers will pull in and be able to drive through um, two bays. 
it could actually fit four vehicles, but it's really designed for prisoner drop off for one vehicle and to be able to go through. It also fits a ambulance. Um, you can see here there's some some tubing in there. That's basically there's a is on in slab heating elements that were put in. And over here are the prisoner cells in these locations. And then there's a uh, detention cells. They're very similar. Um, they're very similar in the in the process of, of processing a prisoner. Um, and just the Sally Port. This is the concrete work. It's kind of showing you we're catching up to present day. The new windows. There's uh, the new window that this is over the north stairway. The entrance, um, as you can see, there's all new windows that have been installed in the front. Um, new blocking is if we're preparing for the AZAC trim. So we're making good progress. Um, and this, this is the um, third floor. This is the level of where, we're, where we are at the third floor. We're actually putting in ceilings now in the third floor. Um, and this is the police chief's office. Um, so you can see they're starting to paint. They'll put the first couple coats of paint and we'll, we'll leave the last one for, you know, the, the, we'll expect some dents and dings in it. So, um, you save the last coat for the very end of the project. Uh, now to get to the budget, this is exactly the budget that, that was presented, um, when we set the GMP. So we're at the, the, still at the 29 million. And you can see there's, you can't really see it here um, that well, but it's, we came with a calculated 1.9% contingency, uh, $1.9 million contingency. Um, and that's where we started. And where we are today is we've drawn down the contingency. Um, we have the 1.9 that we started with. $158,000. Basically, these are rough order of magnitude budgets. You could look at the PCO log that was uh, transmitted with this to, to go into any sort of details. Um, there was one soft cost change order that was um, and basically we had an allowance for we knew we were going to run into some uh, some abatement. So we had a $100,000 allowance. So we transferred over the 65 to cover that change order. So it's just really a, a transfer um, from 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 a soft cost item that we knew we were going to have, and the contingency items that have been approved by the police department building committee um, is five hundred and forty four thousand um, dollars. This is all tracked on that PCO log that that I I sent is a ta that I sent to the with the um, packet and. Um, we'll go with that into detail, but every single one of these has been vetted out by the committee and voted on by the committee. Um, so they, they've really kicked the tires on these. We went through all of them and they're, and these are hundred percent approved. So, so far we've drawn down $638,000 or roughly 2.2% 2 .2, um, uh, of the overall project cost for contingency. So that's a uh, that's uh, so we're at one point two six million dollars for current contingency. Um, so and every every two weeks we go through this log, um, the complete log uh, from start to bottom, or at least the new items. Uh, so anyone that would wanted wanted to attend, we have a a, a meeting basically every other Thursday. Uh, we have one coming up this Thursday where we'll go through the log in detail. Um, but the the like I said, the committee really uh, kicks the tires on these and makes sure that everything is in the best interest of the town that we're doing. Um, and then we're about thirty five percent complete with the with the project, um, and we spent thirty three percent of our contingency. But that um, that 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 um, I would I would just note that basically. 60 70 percent of our risk is in the first 20 percent of the project so we're we're already 100 percent demoed we've put most of the risks behind us we have some additional um uh, site work to do so we could run into some stuff there and we know that we have um some challenges getting through some of the some of the walls in the lower level some of the load bearing walls so that'll be an <laughs> item that we know is coming at us for a contingency drawdown um, but 
generally speaking, I'm really comfortable with where we are on the contingency and hopefully we'll be able to turn back over, um, you know, a, a good portion of this contingency back over to the town. Um, and that's all I have. Um, we do, like I mentioned, we do, we did have uh, the detailed cost breakdown. It was attached. I wasn't going to go through it, but I can, obviously I can answer any questions. Uh, terrific update. I think, I mean, I'm hearing on or ahead of schedule and kind of right on the money on the mm -hmm. budget. The, the, you're, what you're saying on the contingency really, I guess, is the risk now moves off of our contingency to the builder's contingency. Right. Yeah, I mean, it could it could be it could be both. It's really for the on. It's the more unforeseen conditions. There's less of them behind us. I mean, they, I mean, there's a lot. Right. There, there's more of them behind us. So, so yes. Yeah. We have more control over the contingency now. Right. Questions? Comments? I don't know if you have any thoughts. I know you. I, I'm. I was, was pleased. Then on Thursday we have in the next uh, mm -hmm. commission uh, committee building building committee meeting and. Um, Turner and Slam are going to present the earned value analysis I asked mm -hmm. for, um, mm -hmm. which would be great. That's going to show basically from beginning to end um, the cost we're supposed to develop and the schedule compared to cost. Are we ahead or behind schedule with cost? And then they're going to show that monthly. So that's that's going to be very helpful for us as a snapshot to see how is it how is it going versus. Oh, we spend this much cost, right. but did we right. make the progress? Where are we? Right, exactly. That's yeah. no, good. But overall, I think it's great. Um, Joe, there was, um, was it the windows? Something was wrong with the windows, and then Turner didn't check or something, and they decided to, to eat that, that additional cost. I heard something. Was that? Yeah, I mean, well, they didn't decide to eat it. So what, what happened was the windows weren't, weren't purchased um, by the procurement department with the, with the glazing that was requested by the architect that was specified so they we they didn't we didn't we don't have to pay any cost for any of the labor but we do have to pay the premium for the for the windows we, as if we bought them day one they would have cost more um so we bought them you know day 10 and they they cost more so they funded that from their contingency line item Right. 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 We would have, we would have, if we had bought them originally, we would have paid that price, but you know, but it would, so we bought it to Joe's point on day 10, paid the same price, got the materials that we wanted, but turn the rate on their side. If you will. Every, every <clears> Wednesday, 8 a.m. I was going to, that's why I was going to give a plug. So every Wednesday, 8 a.m. I walk through Deanna's come through three times or more. The interns came through my high school interns. You're welcome to come. Uh, Joe and I, and uh, Scott, walk through the building and uh, we can give you a, um, a tour. So just just let me know you're coming. We'll get you a hard hat okay. and a vest. And uh, But every Wednesday morning, eight o'clock, it's a good tour and it gives you a, a good snapshot every week of how progress is going. And you can see if there's a problem develops, how it's how it's handled, but how do you know, it's a, it's a good mix to come in on the Wednesday before the Thursday meeting. So okay. anyone that wants to is more than welcome. Appreciate that. Yeah. But just one quick question, um, maybe for everybody, at least for my own edification, is if, if we really come in six, seven months ahead of schedule, we would have thought that certain of the projected costs must come in lower than what they would have been projected to be, I mean, if you're leasing equipment, whatever. Is, and I'm just wondering, is there any scenario in a GMP arrangement where those costs would come back to the town, the savings? Yes, yeah, so, so any, any of the, any, any of the cost for general conditions or general requirements, or will we be saving money on the rent at the at the police station for sure? That's another you know forty thousand dollars plus the plus the carry costs, uh, not the carry costs, but plus the electrical costs and and stuff like that. So there's definitely a, a savings opportunity. Um, some of the cost for the the um, general conditions were kind of already baked in because they had an accelerated schedule to start with over on the Turner side. Um, and we had a little bit of contingency in the schedule as well. Okay, good. Yeah, so that the rent on the 39 Locust is a, is there a, a lease or is it, if you, you end early, the police can just leave and- Yeah, well, we, we have to give them uh, three months notification 
and it's it's month to month. We took over the oh, board okay. of education lease. Okay, okay. Other questions? Great update, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Joe. All right, yeah. appreciate it. On to the playhouse. Okay. How are we doing? We're we're doing well. How about that? The uh, this, <laughs> we we have uh, ten days or so left, but we're we're doing uh, we're doing well. Um, so I'll try to walk you through the building as you yeah. come into it, if you will. So if you come in the front doors, we have we front have doors. doors. Okay. Um, a little bit of we an laugh, issue. But that was <laughs> that was so, right, and that, that's ahead of schedule. So so we we have front doors. We have a little bit of an issue on hardware, but we had that we solved that today. As far as the hardware didn't come with the door, um, but we have hardware, so it, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> but so we have front doors. You come into the entryway. The wood flooring has been installed has not been buffed, sanded, or, or um, sealed yet, but it is down. Uh, so then if we work, uh, let's say, left to right, you go into the bar. Um, the bar is in, the front bar is in, the back bar will be installed shortly. All the appliances are behind the bar and the taps need to be installed, which is probably the most important part of that bar, but the flooring is in, everything is is ready to go. Did they get the um, dishwasher? Excuse me? Did the dishwasher come in? Yes, everything, yes. We had, had a, a, they had a miniature, Dishwasher, which is half what you have at home. Right. <laughs> so the uh, so then on the concession side, the cabinetry is in for the concession. The tabletop is not yet. That they were cut, so they were they were sized and they'll be cut and then brought in. Um, as far as the countertops themselves, so and that flooring is in. So that whole area is done. If we get to the men's room on the left hand side, tile is in, fixtures are in, waiting for partitions. The women's yeah. what? They're there. Uh, they're there, but they're not in. Yeah. So that uh, on the women's side, we have tile, we have petitions and well, fixtures and partitions. And the partitions are, they look quite nice. I think um, myself, they're black. Um, and then if you get, if you start to work your way, if you say you go down into the basement, basement is complete. The flooring, um, we put an epoxy floor in where they're going to store their food and we painted the walls for, uh, for the health department. That's all complete. Uh, and then if you work your way on staircases going up to the upper floor, um, that has the wood flooring being installed. One one was in, one was being installed, uh, but that should have been done by the end of today. I was there earlier today around one o'clock. Um, so that's complete. You get onto the second floor, all the wood floors installed and it actually started to be buff sanded in first coat of paint uh, of sealant, I should say. Uh, windows are in, that bar is in, waiting for the countertop. Countertop's been sized, countertop's been templated, just waiting for the countertop to come in. <clears throat> go outside of that all the flooring is in the plating room everything is in the plating room that, that we need all the appliances plating room is essentially uh, substantially complete get to the server room server room they're working on right now just rewiring for the um, projector and should be good and then uh if you get to the theaters the left hand theater both seats are in on both sides um they're comfortable they're nice i kind of walked my way through and sat and kind of the the different ones um and they're working on the flooring lighting on the left-hand theater and they'll move to the right-hand theater after that's done they'll probably be done on the left-hand side today tomorrow and then work their other way around um, and then they were outside painting itself so we had about 16 17 men minimum they're working and in this uh in the attic the hvac and the plumbing is substantially complete so there are a couple of guys up there doing some little, couple little things but for the most part that's substantially complete so um is looking quite good for us to meet our mark at the 21st and then cinema lab has plans for the following week for you know their grand opening and then some other events that they have planned um tomorrow we'll start the exterior work so the sidewalk on the outside specifically the first five feet coming off the building first five and a half feet coming off the building we'll be installing with concrete that's that work starts tomorrow he should be done by monday tuesday of the following week um and then we'll have to temporarily transition to the existing sidewalk that's say the brick sidewalk and elsewhere outside. And the goal is that once that's done inside, we get the theater up and running, then we'll work on the bump out and finish the side town sidewalks, if you will. Uh, and then the, um, the work in the back of the, uh, the theater, as far as the staircase and the ramping. So the, that'll be a next phase where we would be tripping over ourselves. If I tried to put everyone in, in that space at present, um, it wouldn't, it just wouldn't necessarily work. We had to wait for the thresholds to be installed anyways, to get the sidewalk to work. And at that point in time, we wanted to try to stay within the 
the fencing, so you still can't necessarily see in. People who are taller can look over the top and look inside and see things, but for the most part, you, you know, we're trying to um, keep the mystique as to what it's going to look like. But it's going to be, it'll be, it's very pretty. Yeah, so what's pretty. left from a CO point of view, though? We went through that with uh, the health department today. She's, um, they put in, Sinmalab put in their permit, paid their side of it. So she's working, Jennifer is uh, doing an excellent job with us from the health department standpoint, working through that. We have some other items that we have to finish. Um, the, the elevator itself will be, the state is coming down to test the elevator on the 20th. Okay which is the only date we could get for them to come in. So they'll test the elevator at that point in time. They have to put a full load test on it at that time. And then our fire marshal will test our egress and our alarm systems at that time. Um, those are the last okay. couple of items, but uh, the building department's been excellent. Fire marshal's been excellent. All the town departments, health department, they've all been excellent trying to help us move through the process. And they've been there pretty much daily to help us uh, work through and, and uh, finalize. So it's looking, you know, I'm not going to say it's 100% because I, I just can't do that, but I, I can tell you it looks very good. You know, the prospect of opening on the 21st or, or the CFO and, and, and handing it off to a Cinema Lab on the 21st is, is um, coming very close to fruition. Questions? Great update. Thank you for that. Thank you. And great news, honestly. That's, uh, that's right. very good to hear. Any word on opening? So the public opening is scheduled for the 28th. Some private openings previous to that. That's 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 a that's a, that's a schedule, and they're working through um, some items as to how they want to uh, how they'd like the opening to unfold, if you will. And and uh, they're so working a through a soft present. opening. I would guess they'd want to make yeah. sure everything works. And yeah, and we're letting uh, staff use you know uh, a couple conference a conference room downstairs for training. Mm -hmm. to try and give them a little prep time beforehand. So. Right, since the time frame is a little tight between our CFO and opening, they wanted they didn't need to be able to train, so we're giving them some space downstairs so that they can train and work through how how they want the food presented, the you know the beverages presented, things of that nature, that you sometimes would do in the theater, but they just don't they just don't have the time. Okay, so ready for a movie to be shown on the twenty eighth. Right. Okay. Can't tell you what it is yet. Don't know. Okay. So. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's their surprise. That's fine. Right. That's fine. Can't believe you're not telling us. But anyway, um, <laughs> for all the work we did. Um, any questions? Any other thoughts? I just want to give kudos to you guys. It's um, I go every Friday with Diana, and it's just the week to week. I know she goes more frequently, but for me, the she's there every day. Progress. So <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, especially the last couple of weeks. The progress you guys have made is really amazing, and it looks really good. Thank you. Great. Okay. You have any thoughts? No, I just you know it's encouraging to see everybody sort of coming together. They're meeting again and really kind of working through. You know, construction projects are never easy, but mm. everybody's sort of rowing in the same direction and you know even today in land use meeting you know um like the health department really understood like they're they're willing to roll up their sleeves and do whatever so everybody everybody in this building knows how important this is to the town and is doing everything they can to help bill and tiger and the cinema lab to get whatever they need to open. so thank you to all the no. staff and Okay. All right. Anything else? No. Tiger, thank you. Thank you. As always, okay. If nothing else, then um, we'll have a motion to adjourn. Nick? Maria, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, none. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you. Wrap up to our season. Good news. Starts again.